Good morning. Hello. Good morning, world. Lovely to be here with you. Hello and welcome to the month of the Earth Rooster. Yeah. We'll just hang tight here a bit while we wait for some people to come on. Or not. You never know. Maybe it'll just be recorded and you watch it later on YouTube. Yeah. Hi, Crystal. Uh, Lena. Yeah, nice to see you. Hi, Carol. Thank you for joining live. Nice to see you. And of course, lovely Lois. Yeah, hello and welcome to Saturday. I was just looking it up. Earth Goat Day in the month. So we're still actually technically in the month of the monkey. And so, yeah, I got lots to talk about. Hello and welcome. I can see all your posts. Hi, Lisa. Nice to see you. And uh, yeah, so lovely to be with you here. And I so appreciate um, those of you that watch this live and actually I'm going to ask for the, those of you to just help to help support so you know especially those of you that are here right now that together we are more you know like that we are all connected and so by um, aligning with people that are taking responsibility and commitment and consciousness for their lives you know as a motto if you will we support one another so I ask you to share this and so you know I, and and uh, it's a gift I give each month free to all of you so hello and welcome everyone to conscious conversations for September 2022 hi Bridget nice to meet you and I'm Marlena and uh, every month I take an overview of what's showing up emotionally energetically, psychologically, hi Iris, metaphysically, astrologically, and with the feng shui. And you know, I put the word emotionally in there. Um, hi Irene, nice to see you. So I put the word emotionally in there because what really hit me this month as I was uh, getting ready for some of my upcoming classes is that emotions are power. Emotions are power. And, and so if when we come from fear, because emotions are what actually drives our law of attraction and our field. And so we can bring in opportunities, but if we bring them in from fear, the power of fear, if you will, then there's going to be an energy of fear to it. And if we bring them in with the power of love, right, or at least courage, that's a different vibration. And so what's showing up emotionally, particularly this last month, with the monkey tiger month is it's been a doozy for many with many deep big emotions hi maya and hi dusty and uh nice to see you all thank you for being here and so yeah i'm going to start off as usual with an overall you know overview and then do individual looks at your day master so and the feng shui best practices okay? and generally this takes about i'm hoping a little less than an hour but you know it can be that long so how was august for you you know, so we're just almost finished the month of the monkey. And uh, we have a few more days left till September 8th. And so I have actually a monkey in my chart and I have a tiger in my chart because it's the year of the tiger. And for those of you here that are practitioners or who study with me, you know that monkey tiger is a clash. So what that means is this past month for everybody has been a clash, meaning different things are coming up. And remember, and each of the elements actually correlates to emotions. 
And so different emotions have been coming up for people and they come up in different ways. That could be that uh, you had a health diagnosis or you quit your job or you left your marriage, but there's some really big things. And I've been talking all year about the shadow. Good morning, Rachel. And oh, Paolo, yeah, lovely to see you here. Um, so our fears came up in August and it could be different types of fears. Like, am I making the right decisions or you miss somebody terribly? Or So August has been a month of dealing with your shadows and your dark emotions. Why is this valuable? Because you see, metaphysics is actually a tool to show us what needs to be looked at and then how to work with that to raise our vibration. Okay. And so, yeah, many of you have been dealing with issues around fear or guilt, you know, and so why are, why is this all happening? Because it's not random. The universe just goes, oh, I'm going to punish everybody this month and look at emotions. No. Why are we looking at emotions? Because then we can transmute them because we're actually learning as we go into age nine. And this is a really, really big thing that I see so clearly is that as we go into age nine, more and more, and for those of you who don't know what age nine is, is in Chinese astrology, time, there's another layer to the calendar, if you will. And there's 20 year periods that influence us. And we're entering into period nine, which is the end of these periods before we start a new cycle. There's nine numbers. And this is the period of fire. Okay. But what we're actually learning in fire, which governs spirituality and metaphysics and transformation, is we're learning how powerful we are as individuals, that we are powerful people, and that we create our lives. And that by learning how to work with our emotions, the key is actually our emotions. Learning how to manage our emotions, which it covers all of the metaphysics tools, whichever you want. Like if you can come from a higher vibration, you have, that's the key. Now, why do we have things that make us first have to suffer? Because the only way to get to a higher emotion is by recognizing where you're at and then dealing with it either physically or how exactly. Hi, Melanie. Hello, Rachel. Uh, Francisca, yeah, um, hello everybody, so good to be here with you. So here's the thing, as I just said, your emotions are not just emotions, they are powers. Fear is a power, love is a power, and what kind of world do you want to live in? Because your power is the vibration that you emit. And so we use feng shui to make our homes more beautiful, to align ourselves with energies that support us and things. But really the thing too, moving forward, is we learn astrology to work with time to do the right things at the right time. So if you want to live in a world with love, you have to be more loving. It's not that the world has to be more loving first. You're actually connected to that part. And this is more and more what people are realizing as we move through through metaphysics is how powerful we are. So if you're in constant fear, no matter what you manifest, it'll never be enough because you're actually manifesting more fear. I have many, many wealthy clients who, who are, live in fear of losing their money, of their friends aren't you know, nice enough, their boyfriend will leave them, etc., etc. And so part of this is learning how to live in the world and manage. And metaphysics is a tremendous tool because we can take actions with astrology, feng shui, etc. So we are all bandwidths of energy, okay? And potential and learning to manage our emotions is the key. So as we awaken, that's what we're awakening to, is how powerful we are. We are asked to be accountable, not only to our potential, but to making our lives better. To be accountable to choosing to, to be a better person. Isn't that what you want from other people to give to you, their highest selves? Well, then this is now our opportunity to be our highest selves. And that's why I give you these. Uh, that's why I teach and do this work is to support you through metaphysics. Okay, so to support you, yeah, I want to talk about this too. And this whole process of how to navigate through our emotions, because I'm going to tell you some of the fears are going to get worse before they get better. The next, uh, I would say the next five months are a bit tricky and we'll talk about that. But tricky only in the sense that it's an opportunity to really see what's important in your life, what's working, and to let go of your bad habits, which is why I offer with my team free classes like this one monthly and the moon circle. Because in the moon circle, which is held on the full moon each month, 
And thank you so much for those of you who've jo been joining me and Yuko and Lois and, and whatnot. I do some teaching on what's doing happening astrologically and how that's impacting you and all of us. But the big key there with the full moon is to release the blocks, to release the blocks. And part of that is feeling your emotions. And that's why we do a guided meditation and a sound meditation. And so, yeah. So before I tell you more about what's coming, it's like, yeah, let me tell you about my August, okay? And I shared with you, I have monkey and tiger in my chart. And yes, there was a clash and I knew there would be a clash. And I teach in all the teachings though, everything happens for you, not to you. Okay, so then it became, all right. And I knew I was a little bit like, what's gonna happen this month? Well, the kind of things that happened to me was the father of my children needed surgery. Um, one of my children had a relationship breakup. Another one of my children is going through massive anxiety over some different things. And so, and then a lot of students were alarmed. I taught a big class. Did things go smoothly? No, the internet dropped and very software didn't work. Like you name it, issue after issue cropped up. I can't control. You see, just because you have good feng shui, it doesn't mean you can control the issues that they don't happen. But because I know that everything happens for me, I could look at my reactions and I could choose a different reaction. So instead of being a victim and going, oh, poor me, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Oh, no, not another one. You know, that type of a thing. I actually decided to use the opportunity to experience it differently. And what did that mean? It meant allowing myself to not have an immediate reaction. My immediate reaction actually became take a breath and listen. Listen from your heart. Don't listen from your mind. Listen from your heart. And so as person after person or issue after issue came up, I slowed down and I took a breath and I listened. And you know what? Every single time the connecting with the person by honest listening from my heart changed the energy. Now I've taught, I have been taught that it is possible to transcend your chart. Now, how do you transcend your chart? Like when I look at the charts of spiritual people like Eckhart Tolle or Dalai Lama or um, many, you know, Louise Hay, like spiritual people, and nobody's perfect, right? Everybody has stuff. They don't suffer. And really, isn't the whole purpose of this is to end suffering? Stuff still happens, but they're in the moment and the, it changes, okay? And so I actually found by how I reacted, by as simply as just having patience and listening and coming from my heart, as much as I could in all interactions, it changed. I could be present and I could actually be fine. I want to say thank you to all the Mastery Practitioner students who are with me in the last you know, we did six days of live online classing, teaching cl classing. And I know many of you here have actually studied with me and, and even myself as a seasoned student and I've been with, at, you know, in metaphysics for many, many years, I get overwhelmed. And so to sit there with your overwhelm and to work with it, whether you're watching the classes every day live or watching them later, again, give yourself a pat on the back. You showed up, right, in whatever way you could. And so I look forward to getting your homework and I look forward to supporting you in the you know months to come as we work through you now analyzing and through the materials. And, and I'm just so proud of you. And, and um, again, so often, all of us probably do this as well, is in our mind are the stories of what I didn't do today. Oh, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. No. It's like one of the best coaching techniques I've been taught is every day write down three things you did do and start rewiring your brain for what you did do, not what you didn't do. Okay. Yeah, good morning, Patricia. And so, yeah, what's going on, right? So now let's just look a little bit at the year and then let's look at the month. We have five months left in the water tiger year. In the water tiger year, the is has been a doozy, if you will, in the sense that we all knew um, astrologically it's a spiritual year and it's a very unbalanced chart this year and so many many things were were predicted if you will and so I'm more about yeah we can focus on all the problems but that will bring you fear 
And actually what I want to talk about is actually what's the solution. The solution, actually, what the metaphysics teachings are, the hexagram for the year is three sprouting. Okay, and there's different methods of looking at the hexagrams. And for those of you that have been waiting for my astrology, the I Ching class, it's happening in November where I teach this method. Okay, but the hexagram for the year is says, here's what my, you know, what I looked up. Difficulty in the beginning. Okay, so yeah, the first few months been a bit challenging, and I actually think there will be some more challenging too. But it's for people, we have to persevere and have courage and push to remain, to go forward, right? This is the year to persevere, all right? Now, I want you to always remember too, Doozy is right. When you persevere, have you guys decided what emotion do you want to experience at the end of the year? So are you persevering with fear or are you persevering with something that's more connection and love? Okay, so choose because we're all persevering, but you can choose to persevere and like, okay, I can enjoy this moment and do the best. All right. And so this, the message there is to persevere and to align with noble people. All right. Align with noble people. Do your research. Do not do quick things to get rich. Yes. Anything that doesn't have proper resources is going to have trouble getting ahead. And the other thing is, I think one of the biggest messages of the year, because fire is in growth, is, what, is a term we use, is that people need hope. And the way out actually is through the fire, which is through transformation. All right. So this is a year to be creative. All right. Avoid carelessness. Don't be distracted by get rich quick or quick schemes, all right? This is a year to be rooted and grounded. Don't be impatient. Listen to your heart calling. No shortcuts. Chances of petty things coming up. And there's petty things coming up all the, over the place. My internet doesn't work. And oh, they did this or that. Even And also just be mindful of the things that you spread by gossiping or talking about other people. It's like what kind really being conscientious is the opportunity this year to change how you think and respond. So we need to stand firm to our values in 2022. But here's the thing. What are your values? How many of you have actually said, these are my values and I live by them? And are they spiritual values? Meaning, are they values that you want to have in your life by other people? Faith and sincerity is important. And if you come from that place, money will come. Okay, money will come. Coming And so again, this is like, okay, can you get to trust? Can you get to trust? All right, just hang on a sec. I got to turn off notifications here. All right, so uh, I would advise very much don't go into speculative high market risks, okay, as well, <clears throat> or even any type of risky situation. Big companies that are not built on proper foundations are at risk. There's another thing. And then next year, we will start to really see a stable recovery. We're not in a stable recovery yet. And why are we not in a stable recovery? Because people have to go through their fears in order to actually stand up and say, these are my values. And then your actions need to go after your values. And you know what? Those values might even be if, if being a conscientious person and, and um, being kind is a value that you like, then this is something that you will be tested in different opportunities. Well, are you kind in this situation? Or are you kind in that situation? Okay, and so that's still what's happening in the overall year. I am going to go into more depth with this on September 9th for those of you who would like to join me for the Rise Up and Finish Strong. Okay, and I'm going to go through each month, each hexagram. I'm going to go through the astrology for each person in depth, and I'm going to give you activations for the rest of the year. And I'm going to talk some about what's coming in period nine, and it'll be a full day class and it is recorded. I recommend for those of you who are committed to making a difference and to improving your life and to being part of the solution, <clears throat> that that's a class that will help support you with planning. Okay, as we go. So, Lois will put up the link and, and uh, I hope to see you there. Okay, so 2024 through 2026, we will see a recovery, but it is a recovery of a different sort, okay? In the sense that we really are being asked to choose where are your, what's your heart and what's your values. 
because um, our thoughts are part of what's creating the future. And that's actually what we're going to learn more and more moving forward. And that's also a really exciting thing that I'm sharing in the Manifesting Magic class, which is now the membership class. And we meet once a month, but we talk about law of attraction. And I give you specific law of attraction techniques in addition to the feng shui. And so that's also lots of fun. Okay. And so those will put up the link. Check both of those out. Okay. And if not, just join us in the moon group. All right, let's get to Earth Rooster Month. Okay, what's happening specifically in Earth Rooster Month? It starts on September 7th. Now, why is astrology important? Now, you see, I'm getting excited. I'm moving and jiggling. We are vibrational beings. Okay, we are all vibrational beings. And every month, a different vibration comes in. So with the rooster, it's pure metal, earth and metal. And our vibrations, our astrology blueprints, our homes, everything gets affected by these vibrations. It gets affected by the year and it gets affected by the month. And so these are actually cosmic opportunities. They're not, you could call it karma, but to me, karma is neutral. It is not a negative thing. The worst thing that happens to in our lives is our thoughts about what happens. Okay, but we can work with that. That's some of the biggest work that I'm actually doing with people. Now, metal, what vibration is earth rooster? Well, monkey, rooster, and dog are all part of the metal season, autumn, and rooster is the peak of that month. And now we have the vibration of metal, which is um, a, it's a melancholic, uh, righteous, altruistic type of energy. So the metal is affecting all of us. And sure, within Chinese medicine, it affects people and all that as well. Like in Chinese medicine, you know, it, it brings, it, we call it brings down the temperature. Many of us get more damp. And then there's, as a result, maybe more colds and things. But I want to talk here about the emotional impact. Okay. So the emotional impact of rooster month, even though it's what we call a peach blossom month, is that there's more melancholy in the world. Now, why is melancholy? How could melancholy be important? Melancholy is important because you need to, it's pondering and being thoughtful, right? Being thoughtful. And so it's like contemplation. Okay. And so it's the crops have been harvested. It's we're deciding what to store. How, how was the first six months of the year? What worked? What didn't work? Right. The days are getting shorter. We are meant to go within and look within and start to plan. What do we need to let go of? What do we need to change? The hexagram for the month is the wanderers, also known as traveling. The message here is moving forward, exploring new world and starting new cycles. I would say we're starting new cycles, perhaps more in the planning stage than actually in the action stage. I think the next couple of months are still quite more of a, just be very prudent in how you move forward. Uh, there's a lot of change happening in the world. I'm sure you felt it between solar flares. Like it's an intense energy out there. And I would say, unless you're calm and really sure, it's not the time to really make, you know, um, big decisions. However, I'm going to go through each sign and we'll see what each sign is best at too. Okay. So with the wandering thing, how does that, how is it the best to start new cycles? Well, wandering is the message in the I Ching is you have gone into new territory or you should go into new territory. And what happens if you're a stranger in a new country? You need to make friends. You need to make friends. You need to try new things. You need to connect. And so I would say this is a month coming up where it's very good to explore new ideas and to explore or expand into new markets, but not necessarily with contract signing, all right? To get to know, because there's a saying, uh, Tony Robbins says that I really like, is you throw out the baseball and you see who wants to play catch, who throws it back. And so this is a good time to talk about uh, meet people who, who do you even know who your ideal customer is or who your ideal friend is or who the people are that you want to hang out with? So go out there and explore. Try some new things. OK, so it's interesting. I also, you know, I do a lot of research every month, not just with metaphysics. OK, I follow Western astrology. I follow tarot and I also follow several intuitives. And it's actually really interesting. It, how often everybody says the same thing. And I know when everybody's saying the same thing that they're onto something. Okay. And so all of them are talking about healing, 
deep awakening and disorientation. Now, disorientation, I think, is a really important word here, too. I actually want you to feel disoriented. Why? Because how if you're doing something you've never done before that's going to grow you to the next level, it's going to feel unfamiliar and disorienting. Okay. And so in that place, now you get to do some research. Okay. What way do I act? And the other is, am I coming from fear or what emotion am I bringing to this? Okay. Because that's actually the intention you're setting for the projects or moving forward. I've also shared with you how important a year this is for many reasons, because the seeds we set this year are the future. Every single month, starting from February, which was a duplicate month, is the next 12 years. And there's a thing in astrology about ascending and descending chi, but it's also the, uh, it's like the seeds are being set now for the future. So that actually too is what part of the reason why we're doing manifesting magic and the moon circle as diligently as we are, because I too want the support that I every month set intentions for what I'm hoping to create. And then I start making that process moving forward. Okay. And so, yeah, are you stepping into your power? So many of you that come for readings, I'm talking about that too. Are you stepping into your power? Now, and what is your relationship with power around you? That's another way that we're all being tested. Now, two ways that power affects us. Are you letting people take advantage of you and you're not speaking up for yourself? You're giving away your power. That could be one. The other is how do you react to your power? Are you a bitch? Are you, you know, a jerk? Or are you able to be in grace and connection still at the same time? Wouldn't that be a great world that we live in when people can do that? So regardless of whatever system you're looking at, okay, the overarching theme for September is healing ourselves from old beliefs and old wounds that keep us stuck and deep awakening is happening to allow us to see differently. Much of this, if not all of this, is unconscious. And so... What if, for instance, though, you decided life was good? What if you decided life was good and you woke up every day having decided that? How would you get out of bed? That would be, and sometimes we need to fake it till we make it, right? And then, because I, if you wake up every day with, oh, this hurts, my body hurts, or I have to work, or, you know, whatever, life is hard, that's what your day is going to be, okay? Okay. So yeah, own your value. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of kindness, empowerment. All right. And so remember, love is a power. All right. So now let's look on at the individual month, okay, and uh, the different day masters. Okay. So yeah, we're vibrational beings with soul contracts. We actually consciously chose to be born to the parents at that moment because then the personality that you embody, usually the personality that we embody in this lifetime, takes off from the personalities we left in the last lifetimes. Now, the theme will be the same. We all have running themes of negative thought patterns, and the real opportunity in this lifetime is to change those themes, okay? So, all right, if you are a water day master, so if you look at the chart, at the top of the day, there are what we call day masters. And if you you can go to my website to get a copy of our, your chart. And uh, most of you here know what your day master is. Okay. And so water day masters. So one of the things is we are interacting with the, um, the energies of the month. It's earth rooster. Okay. So your day master water is relation dealing with the earth rooster. Many of you here are practitioners. So, um, you can extrapolate this into the Ten Gods and whatnot a bit deeper. But for water day masters, the Earth Rooster is what we call influence and resource to you. Okay, influence and resource. And I'm going to talk about this in a couple different ways, let alone the different stars. But the stars, you know, like if it's your peach blossom star, or if it's your study star, or your different stars, they actually are influenced by whether the element is what we call useful to your chart or not. Okay, very much that's important to learn how to figure out or whether it's clashed or those types of things. 
If you have the influence element happening with the earth this month for water, depending on who you are, it's soft earth, right? With the soft earth, what can happen? Maybe a little bit of confusion is one thing. A little, because earth and water is mud, right? And so there's a little bit of that happening, but it is your influence element. So you're going to want to have more structure. You're going to want to have more self-discipline. You might be a little bit confused in the process. And then there's resource there. The metal supports you. There are people in your life this month. This is just the brief. I'm going to do the branches to the animals. Okay, just hang on. The resource is for you. There are people there to support you. Okay. Now, if there aren't people there literally to support you, it means that your ideas might be supportive. Okay, your ideas might be supportive. So you might actually get from your guides and angels a good idea. All right now there is a little bit of confusion there so make sure you do your due diligence is this a good idea but you are being supported to have more self-discipline and just literal support wood day masters your wealth element is there okay and so i would take advantage of this if you have a wood day master it's on top because wealth opportunities um, are going to get less over the next few months well maybe not in dog month but it's like the earth is still strong and um, it's a good month to go get sales to uh, and also to get more self-discipline let me just see here too I'm just going to go yeah all right the um, when we have the wealth element available so to speak in a month the, the thing is you should um, what's the thing you're working you're busy, you're trying to get things done. Now, maybe it's not literally getting things done with work or sales, but it will be you're busy in your life. You are just are active. Wealth is always an active energy because of the thought is you're actually accomplishing something, all right? And then there's the influence element of self-control, of, um, self if you will. With wealth and influence combined together, there's an opportunity that you, especially if you're work focused, okay, that you could do more sales that's going to raise your position or your status. You have your reputation. You, you, or you could spend money to improve your reputation. These are ways that you can use these influences. A fire day master, you're going to have be more creative this month. And those ideas could turn into money for you. Okay, But again, you're going to be busy. It's a month of doing things. It's a month like use this month, be innovative, be innovative, spend time with your children because output can also be children for women. But it's like be innovative and then think and ponder about ideas that you could turn into products, you know, that are uh, have a value. Okay, Because that's the energy of this month for you. If you are an Earth Day master, you have friend with output. So a simple way to say, how does that work? It's like collaborate with your friends to create useful ideas. So what so often happens in astrology, I see, is people get influences, like these vibrations come in, and they don't do anything consciously with it. They just experience it. Oh, this is a month I'm with my friends. Well, if I tell you, you have a month where there's going to be more friends around, now you could choose which friend have you been waiting to connect with that might be helpful for you to create an idea that's innovative that might be supportive for you down the road. I mean, if you're just at home and, and don't have to earn money, then this will be a month if you're an Earth Day Master where you will enjoy be hanging out with people. But if you're not conscious, you will waste time hanging out with people. And the ideas that come forth with that never turn into anything. Okay. You have to actually be conscious as to how do you use these to get what, and this gets back to having a plan. Do you have a plan for your life? Or are you just on a boat that you let take you anywhere? You know, part of this is what direction are you steering the boat? And that that's actually what age nine is offering us. And in a way, it's, it's a bit tough because if you're an ostrich that's had your head in the sand, you know, all these years, all of a sudden you can't do that. Because now it's in your face what you need to change. And so now the choice is, are you a victim? Or are you a someone who um, is consciously going to go, okay, that happened. And I'm not going to let that define me. Okay, I'm going to work with that to release that and to live a better life. This is true for all of us was what's happening. Now, if you are a metal day master, there's resource and friend elements. So same thing. It's like you're being supported, but your friends could distract you. Now, I'm a metal day master, and I'm already seeing this. And this happened already in August. I have relatives coming in from out of town. I have children coming in from out of town. There's lots of people around. So because for me, that's the focus. I'm actually, you know, 
um, realizing that that's the energy out there. And so how can that, it, you know, and it's not to just enjoy them, but if I have a long-term plan, how can I enjoy them, say, you know, and maybe change my relationships with them so that I'm cleaner and happier with them moving forward. I mean, if there's going to be more people in my life and it comes with the resource element, which is like a bit of nobleman, right? Let me transform these relationships to the relationships where the communication is one that I just feel good about. All right, so we can every month use these energies. Now let's talk about the 12 animal signs, okay? The 12 branches. Now we could say in a simple way, it's the month of the rooster that the snake and the ox and the dragon sort of have the best luck. Now, those of you that are practitioners, you want to know exactly what kind of luck that is, then you look to the 10 gods in relationship to the day master, okay? It's like, and um, and also for those of you that are, you know, hearing me talk a bit about astrology, I will be this fall putting out more free stuff through YouTube and I'm getting, uh, uh, I love astrology. I think it's really a useful tool, but I'm also coming up with some, you know, um, I'm trying to figure out, and actually I'd really like your feedback. And so we'll see from some of you, you can, you can post it, um, send me an email maybe, you know, in that if, if for particularly those of you that study about, so what kind of studying is helpful to you? Is it like a, a uh, get it over with like a four day class or is it like weekly evening classes or what type of format do you find the best format for you to learn that would be the most supportive? I'm curious. All right, so yeah, the snake and the ox and the dragon so-called have the best luck this month. And if you have any of these four animals in your chart anywhere, you will experience opportunities, okay? Because it, it's like a sacred geometry interaction is happening between the energies. Now, for many people, when opportunities come knocking on the door, they're not ready. They're not ready. So opportunities can actually bring up fear too. And so because you're being asked to make a change or decision, you know, that improves your life. And so, yeah, it is for sure true that the snake and the ox and the dragon will enjoy opportunities. Let's see where they go. I'm going to start with the tiger. Okay. The tiger with the earth rooster has what we call wealth luck and will be busy. And thank goodness, because in a way you'll be busy and productive. Let me put it that way, because after monkey month, the, for anybody who has tiger in their chart, You've been busy, but it's not necessarily been flowing smoothly. Okay, so you've had to work through. And here's the thing too, guys. I think any time something doesn't flow smoothly, it's not a punishment. It's actually, oh, what do I need to see here? What's this showing me? How can I work with this? It's actually something that's come up for you to look at, to fix, to change. Have you ever heard what you resist persists? You know, you've heard that statement. Yeah, because it persists until you learn how to deal with it. All right. Dragon. Yeah. Dragon has a combination, right, with the tiger. In a sense, it's a, a with the rooster. Pardon me. The dragon has a combination. Oh, I skipped the rabbit. Sorry. Let me go back to the rabbit. The rabbit. Okay. So the rabbit, the stars for the rabbit this month is there's some wealth luck. But the rooster is a clash. And the rabbit, one of the things with the rooster month that rabbits hate is confrontation. Okay, so I would say that, and there's a confrontation coming. Okay, there's a confrontation coming. Now, I would say deal with it because do you want it to come back again or come back again? And you probably already know the area in your life that you need to make a confrontation. Do you need to tell your mother that, um, you know, something that needs to change the relationship, you know, because resentment lowers your vibration right? Resentment lowers your vibration. Uh, avoiding lowers your vibration. So this is the month, Mr. Rabbit, to look at where do you need to deal with what you're not dealing with and deal with it because then the clash doesn't force you to deal with it because what can happen astrologically is when we know we have to deal something and we don't, it hurts. But if we deal with it and know that it's coming, it doesn't hurt actually. It's with awareness. The dragon has a combo and so yeah to the rooster and we call them best friends but it actually makes metal do you need metal in your chart if you like metal great you know 
But again, are you ready to say yes to the opportunity, right? How and are you prepared to deal with it? And so be careful as well when an opportunity comes your way. And metal is about integrity too, right? Like it's like when you say yes, do you intend to follow through? Are you able to follow through? So make sure your communication is clearly. A lot of you have stories or a lot of us have stories in our lives that repeat that people don't do what we ask, that people let us down. Well, this, if you have an opportunity that comes your way and you say yes, and you let them down without good communication, guess what you're going to get more of? Because you have said to the universe, this is who I am. This is who I am. And so that vibration is going to bring in more of that vibration. So are you ready to change that? Are you ready to be clear and honest and self-accountable? And then guess what? You're going to have more of that in your life. So yeah, Dragon, you have a great opportunity this month. And make sure that you deliver what you promise. Okay? And come always from your heart. Snake more or less has smooth sailing this month. Okay? Because the rooster is your friend. And this, you know, the snake, it's like, so there's opportunities there. Particularly anybody whose chart likes metal is going to more or less enjoy this month. Even with clashes. Charts that don't like metal you know, are going to um, have to create more of their own luck versus uh, push for it. All right. Okay, so horse, you're going to be more, uh, the rooster is a peach blossom star and the peach blossom star, we call peach blossom kind of a people are attracted to you, like everybody loves peach blossoms, right? And there is some romantic energy associated to it and a couple signs that's more the case than others, but the horse also gets some benefit from this. People will like you. So when the month says people will like you, guess what? It's a good month to go out there and be likable and build your network. And this is true whether you're in sales <clears throat> or whether in your personal life, we all need people. We're not meant to live life alone. Life is better when we have respectful, good people in our lives. So the horse, yeah, there's an opportunity there. You're going to be stressed, though, with commitments. But guess what? Your new project should go well. With Peach Blossom here, not only is it an opportunity for you to be more likable, it is an opportunity or to have more people like you. It is an opportunity for you to love people more and to have that rewarded. So tell the people you know that you love them. Goat. Okay, so the goat, the energy this month is you are very busy right with the rooster through the elements and through the stars you will be busy and this may stress your health so take care of your health right and so stress make sure you get enough sleep and make sure you just have good you know pro habits i guess like get exercise and things like that just because stress you will feel stressed because you're busy so again how can you prevent that now that you know that's coming be careful with your commitments right? And make sure that you take accountability for that and communicate when you can't do it. That's all. Monkey, you are getting recognition and rewards for your hard work that you put in, but bad living habits might catch up with you. Remember, you're still clashed to the year, okay? So that means really there's no secrets. What you do, the clash will expose. So if there's, this is potentially a good month for you, and what you do gets exposed, do it with consciousness so that, you know, you, you are proud of what you're getting recognized for. Very much that's true for the next five months. The world is looking at you in the sense when you're in the clash, the world is looking for you and, and you have the opportunity to be seen. Now, actually not even just the opportunity, you are being seen. Okay, this is true for the tiger as well, because both of these are key animals for this year. What are you being seen for, right? I'll answer uh, the question, Patricia, at, uh, when I get to the end of the animals. So rooster is um, in, has what's called a self penalty for the month, okay? Because rooster and roosters is one of the animals that we call self penalty. This is not necessarily a bad thing because there's also with the um, energy of the month, a nobleman energy there, okay? But self penalty. So for those of you that know the 10 gods, the self penalty will be in one of those 10 gods. So for instance, if your self penalty is in the same element as your day master, you are going to maybe spend more money on eat with your friends that maybe you can't afford, right? Like a self penalty means the problems that happen, you caused. If the self penalty is with your wealth element, you're probably spending money you don't have, 
or, you know, you're not being generous where you could be, or, you know, I don't know, you know, you're just making decisions around money that later you regret. So be careful in your decisions. If the self penalty is in the resource element, you, you might not be appreciating the people that work for you, you know, or the people who support you or, you know, those types of things, you get the idea. There is support for you there, rooster friends, but the penalty means you might waste it. Okay, so use the energy is there for you. Again, it's rooster, you're the rooster and it's the rooster month. People are looking at you. What do you want to be seen and recognized for? Okay, Mr. Dog, the dog, remain positive. Not your favorite month. The harm, it comes with what we call in Chinese astrology a harm. And a harm is usually third party issues. Okay, so third party issues, but this person is not a new third party. It's a third party that you already know. And the dog combines with the tiger. So it's not that serious a harm this year, right? The rooster, because the dog also has its friend in the year supporting it. But in a third party issue, if everything that happens is an opportunity, okay, not a problem. Say, say you're, you've done some work and um, somebody else takes credit for it. Did, do you speak up? That might be a third party problem. Or, you know, somebody close to you is taking credit for ideas or not available or different things where you just felt you were supported by someone and now you're not supported. You're just not getting um, the credit or the emotional support that you need. Now, my Chinese teacher, she would say, be pleasing. Don't make the problem worse. Don't, because if you have a bad attitude, people will want to not be with you. That'll be their reaction. So part of this is actually, okay, that's a possibility that could happen. Stand in your power, come from your heart and work through it. Everything is an opportunity. I actually want the first question, if possible, that happens to you whenever anything happens to you is, why did I choose this? Because you choose everything that happens to you by your law of vibration and on some level you are responsible for all of it okay pig now the pig the rat and the ox so the last three okay so for the pig lots of opportunities to be with friends okay and and uh and you have peach blossom luck as well in that the People will want to be with you. People want to network with you. There are just opportunities. There are a little bit of a confusing month for you, but you know, um, in the sense that I think pigs tend to be procrastinators, even though they're water and water moves a lot, they also overthink. And I think that's how they procrastinate is they overthink. And so lots of opportunities and, and don't waste them in the sense of, again, how are you going to deal with them? What do you say yes to? But this goes down to, yeah, somebody might ask you for dinner, but is that really the best use of your time, right? Rat, good wealth luck, good month for investments. Be prudent, invest wisely. People will like you professionally and romantically. So rat, you got a good month going, even though the rat and the rooster have what's called a bit of a peach blossom penalty. And what I would say with that is romantically, this is not a month to make commitments, okay? And I would also be cautious about the energy that you put out romantically, that it comes from a higher vibrational place because there's a tendency a little bit to be lusty and not considerate, okay? And so if that's inside of you, you might attract that. So just be careful and conscious and polite and you'll be great, lots of opportunities there. And the last one here's the ox. Smooth sailing, peace, do not change careers though. Really, I would say for the rest of the years, don't change careers unless you have to. But really, this is more a month. There's opportunities there and different things happening, but there's also some things coming that you don't see. And I think potentially next year is a better year for you. But it is a good, I think you're going to find that rooster month is a peaceful month and a good month. You're going to be relaxing more and perhaps one of the animals that just overall enjoys the whole month more than anybody else. So Patricia, your question is, if horse is in the year and month good for building network and building community? Yes. Okay. But that's for fire. So yeah. And you're a weekday master. If you're a metal day master and that's, um, you're born in the, the year and month of, so the fire is strong. And so I think with the rooster as well, what's happening is potential collaborations with other people that could be beneficial for you moving forward. But absolutely. Yes. 
All right, so let's just talk a little bit about the flying stars. Okay, so people have energy that responds to time, and actually our houses have energy that responds to time. And uh, the whole year is actually quite a powerful year to be activating and working with our houses because there's an aspect in flying stars where the stars have all come back to the center. But every month they still fly, right? And so I'm going to just tell you the brief t t uh, takeaway with this is in September, from September 7th to September 8th, the two best sectors to spend time in are the south and the north. Okay. Now, the whole thing with this too is I know there's a lot of fear among some practitioners with uh, flying stars and with different things because the numbers even have names like illness and stagnation and, and uh, arguments and, and whatnot. Just like astrology, Batsu, is there to show us what we need to work on, so is Feng Shui. And the stars are not to be feared. They are to be worked with, right? They are to be seen as, it's like, you know, we have spring, summer, autumn, fall, and you work with time, we work with these energies. If, say, you're working with one of the stars, like the three, and they call it the argument star, right? You only have arguments if you don't know how to negotiate, okay? It is not the argument star. And every single person reacts to it differently. Now, if you need to speak up and you're not speaking up, maybe you want to use the three, okay? Now, really, it's not possible on a one-hour call on Saturday mornings and conscious conversations to go through flying stars in depth. Um, but really maybe plant the seed in your mind that this is something I would like to learn more and work with more. Because flying stars, there are people who every month, um, uh, what, do we, what do they call that? They um, follow the stars and they actually sleep in different rooms and they use these energies differently. Now, how much benefit does it give you in the long run? They, there's a saying in metaphysics that our lives are a combination of heaven, earth, and man, 33% each. And that earth is our feng shui. And when the feng shui is good, and I don't think anybody has perfect feng shui because things change, right? It's 33% boost. But 33% is a lot. And even say, it's like, are you connected to the space or not? Or are you consciously using the space, right? There's many ways to use this. For this month, though, the, the wealth producing combination, if you will, is in the north. Okay, and so if you can have windows there open or spend time there or clean it or whatnot, please use the north. And then there's another wealth producing combination in the south. And this is where you find the facing direction of your house. You divide your house into nine squares and then you um, you you this is the easy, um, not experienced way to do it. Those of you that know better, do better. But right. And then you see which rooms are different places. OK. So the, this is, um, I for sure will be spending more time in the north this month. And even though, yes, it's got that aspect of what they call the three killings, I'm not worried about the three killings. As long as the forms outside and inside are good, it's all good. But in the south, there's also a wealth producing combination. But that combination is more with hard work comes results. Okay, but both are good. So depending on what you possibly can use, and you'll probably see me next month do a couple of online events from both those corners, but you won't know it. Often as you guys see me move around my house, it's because I'm using different sectors consciously, specifically for this, okay? The Southeast sector is a good sector to study in this month, okay? So if you can use the Southeast sector. And I would just say, I actually think the rest are all um, usable in different ways. I'm not gonna get into great depth with that. I want to just say, primarily focus on the North and the South. If you have a specific question, you can email me. I'm going to give you some activations, okay? And I'm going to um, end, end this with a couple activations and then a final parting thought. And if you have some questions, please put them up, all right? I'm happy to engage with some questions here. So period nine is coming, right? Period nine is coming, and we want to activate our homes, actually, to be ready in, in in some ways, period nine has already started. Those of you that are students know that in 2017, the it actually already began. And so we're, but the official opening, February 4th, 2024. But really in many ways, much of period nine is here. So we want to be connected to the current prosperous energy. It's like, you want that to be your best friend, if you will. So a lot of us live in homes where that needs to be what's called activated. 
So on September 10th, to activate your house's energy to be more prosperous and to align with period nine, at 11, well, really between um, 11 and 1, but I'm saying 11.39 a.m., in south 1 at 165 degrees, okay, you, we have a water activation for two hours. And yes, I know it's a tiger day. Even if you have monkey in your chart, do it. doesn't matter, okay? Just be careful if you have monkey in your chart. That's all. You might spill some water, all right? So activating what we call Sheng Chi for period 9, September 10th, at 11.39 a.m. in South 1, 165 degrees. The bigger the water, the bigger the surface the water, the better. Okay, and so, yeah, and so for me, actually, this happens to be my um, bathtub, and so I can actually put a pump in the bathtub and have water for two hours there moving, right? And so that's what I'm going to do. September 13th is a wealth combination um, uh, boost who you know and so but again if, if do you have a plan for how to make more money 11 oh a.m. Manuela 1139 a.m. thank you yeah and so then um, this is a September 13th we want to activate it can be the whole north sector okay the whole north sector because it's 9-1 you don't have to do the whole north so many of you know how to do this now this could be uh, cleaning it could be water for two hours, any time between 9 and 3 p.m., 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. This is for networking and wealth luck, okay, networking and wealth luck. Activate the north, go sit there, clean the windows, you know, whatever. And then for health luck, one more, September 19th, and we're going to activate the pig sector, okay, and there's a, uh, the pig sector, northwest 3, Okay, Northwest 3 at 7.30 a.m., and that is a water activation for two hours. If you have a small pump, if you have a small fountain and that's all you have, I mean, even a humidifier, right, will be something. But the more water you have, the bigger the surface, and you make it move with the pump, this is what the activation is, all right? Okay, so now let's just summarize. <laughs> um we're all going through a purification. That's actually what's happening. And what's the purification? Our shadows are coming up, right? And we're being asked, though, in the purification, oh, the networking day was for the north, west. Uh, hang on a minute. No, the whole north. Yeah, north one, north two, north three. Yes, for the north. All right, I'll get back to the questions in a sec. Let me summarize. We are going through a purification and being asked to commit. Who are you? Are you part of the solution? Are you part of the problem? What energy do you bring to the world? What comes out of your mouth? What vibration are you choosing to emit? What is your old story? What would you like your new story to be? Need to release to make room for new energy. Our moon group circles specifically with the sound meditation and the guided meditations and the bit of teachings are a place. Do you know I've gone through so many workshops and when I feel safe, even if it's online, and I can find my emotions and I can cry, I make room for new energy to come in. So part of this is learning to get to your emotions and walking through them, to feel the fear, to journal about it, to write it, to release, okay? And so please join us there. Manifestation magic is another place where we, where we consciously make an intention for the month and I teach you law of attraction practices with feng shui to do that as well. Like there's lots of places here, guys, where you can commit. What are you willing to do, though, to commit? Now, for some of you, it's just showing up here. And that's great. That's a start. But I'm going to also say, are you prepared now to maybe take it a step further? We have five months left of this year. I think energetically, the biggest energies are coming really from now till January. Okay. And so, um, yeah, it's exciting. If you want to awaken all of humanity, you have to awaken all of yourself. If you want to eliminate the suffering in the world, then eliminate all that is dark and negative in yourself. Truly the greatest gift you have to give is that of your own self-transformation. All right, so some of you I'm going to see tomorrow in Manifestation Magic. 
And yeah, my wish for you this next month and in this next year is where you awaken and realize your highest potential. All right, may your guides guide you to the opportunities awaiting for you to activate the life of your desires. Much love and light to all of you. Thank you so much for joining me and being here with me. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, thank you all very much.